Hey everyone, Ryan Honeyman here, uh, partner at Lyft Economy, worker owner at Lyft Economy, and also author of the B Corp Handbook, How You Can Use Business as a Force for Good. Uh, Co-authored the second edition with Dr. Tiffany Jana, um, and the book came out on April 23rd, 2019. One of the questions I get most frequently is, what's the difference between certified B Corps and benefit corps? But also, I think a more important question that helps answer that is why is there two, diff two distinct entities? And I haven't really seen a great example answer of what that could be. So part of this video is to answer why there's a difference and then what is the difference. So the story behind the why is that uh, in 2007, when B Lab launched the B Corp movement, B Lab is the nonprofit behind uh, the B Corp movement. Um, they had talked to many different stakeholders uh, in the run up to the launch of the of, of B Lab itself about what the community needed the most. And so there was there was really two different things that um, entrepreneurs and investors and other stakeholders said they wanted. Um, that wasn't available in the marketplace at the time. So the first thing was a certification for a whole company. So you had individual pieces like you could have a green building, a LEED certified green building. You could have a fair trade uh, supplier. You could have um, an energy star building. There was a lot of different things, organic product. There's a lot of different pieces of a company that you could certify, but the difference was that people wanted to know not just that you had a good uh, sustainable building or that you had a supplier that was fair trade, but how was the whole company operating? Was it a good company or just good marketing? So that was one component. The second component was that there had been a lot of negative experiences uh, in the run-up to 2007, 2008, where uh, you know, Ben and Jerry's being an example where a company starts out as very mission driven. I think Ben and Jerry's is the started in the sixties or seventies. And as they grew, um, you know, there, there became more of a business lens and more pressure from shareholders to, uh, maximize profit. And so when, uh, 2000 or 2001, when Unilever came along, um, to potentially buy out, uh, ben and Jerry's, the board of directors felt that they had to take Unilever's offer um, uh, because it was the highest offer and not ref refute it or that the, sharehold the shareholders might bring a lawsuit against the board of directors at Ben and Jerry's to say, hey, you didn't take this offer and maximize shareholder value. So there was a lot of interest in how do we protect the social and environmental mission of a company as it scales. And so the benefit corporation um, was not a distinct entity yet. And so in 2007, around 2007, B-Lab launches one thing called the B-Corporation. So the B-Corporation had those two components within it. It had both a requirement that you meet a certain minimum threshold to certify as a B-Corp, and it also required that you uh, amend your corporate charter, your governing documents, to allow the consideration of more than just profits in decision making. Now, the problem that the founders of B Lab and the supporters of the movement found out is that in the U United States, you can't just have a, a corporate, um, you can't just have founders um, going into their corporate documents, their, their charter, their articles of organization um, to write in things like we will consider workers community and the environment when making decisions it won't stand up in court or at least that was the fear and so when the b court movement started they realized that perhaps a better way to get uh support for the legal component was to actually split out the certified b corporation which is the online assessment um you know measures the whole company from the legal component which is looking at, um, you know, how do we put into our foundational uh, governing documents that we will consider workers, community, and environment when making decisions. So in 2010, Maryland was the first state to pass benefit corporation legislation, 
And now in the United States, it's available in 36 or 37 states. I haven't seen the latest figures, but I know it's up there. And it's also available in Italy. Um, I think Colombia is pretty close. So there's also a, uh, several other countries who are now um, moving forward with benefit corporation legislation in their areas. And so the a that, that's been helpful for me to at least understand why there's two things is because the way that US corporate law works, you need to pass legislation in each state in order for entrepreneurs or companies in that state to take advantage of that legal protection. And so that's why in Delaware, you can become a, a public benefit corporation. That's another piece that sometimes is confusing is because there's the California rule calls it benefit corporation, but in Delaware, it's called a public benefit corporation. So there are some slight variations between different states, but generally um, a lot of the major US states and a lot of states that you wouldn't necessarily think would um, uh, have passed benefit corporation legislation um, have passed it. And so uh, that's a bit of the piece there. So now do companies have to certify as a B Corp or do they have to become a benefit corp? There's also a lot of questions around that. And so um, companies can certify as a certified B Corporation. However, if you are a company that is incorporated in one of the US states that has passed benefit corporation legislation. So let's say I am, um, uh, so my company, Lyft Economy, we are a certified B corporation. Uh, we're formed as a, we were formed as a corporation, an S corporation in California. California had passed benefit corporation legislation. So um, in order to retain our B Corp certification, our company had to change our corporate form to uh, uh, reincorporate as a benefit corporation. And so basically that means that the, you, you send some documents to the Secretary of State uh, of California and you say, you know, we'd like to amend our articles. Usually you have an attorney help you draft the new articles of incorporation. And then your company now has both the legal protection so at Lyft Economy, you know, we're not going to take on investors, but um, some companies may be thinking about scaling. And so if, uh, you know, if Lyft Economy did ever take on investors, we would now have the legal protection um, uh, on the corporate side to t tell those investors that, yes, we will um, consider profits, but we will consider it equally amongst all stakeholders. So shareholders, environment, community workers, um, there's not, um, the way that US corporate law is currently set up is that it's always, um, shareholders are always the, the primary, the default go-to. Um, and so that's uh, one piece. Now, interestingly, there are, um, you know, so there's certified B Corps all over the world, 2,700 certified B Corps, I think around 1,000 are in the US. Um, many US companies are both certified B Corps and benefit corporations. But interestingly, there's, um, there are companies, there's actually twice as many benefit corporations in the United States than there are certified B Corporations. Same requirement to also certify as a B Corporation. They don't have to go on the online assessment, the bimpactassessment.net and fill out um, you know, the questionnaire and get a minimum score and then pay a certification fee to B Lab and then certify. Benefit corporations do not have that same requirement to certify as a B corporation. So there's companies like This American Life, the podcast. Um, some of you may know that's a benefit corporation. When Facebook was getting a lot of pressure again at that time for privacy um, problems, so uh, Ello is a public benefit corporation, but not a certified B corporation. So that's it for now. Um, folks can feel free to put in the chat to uh, have any questions. I'll try to answer them in an upcoming video. Uh, you can also reach out to me directly, uh, ryan at lifteconomy.com.